So the passion versus strategy debate continues on. I knew that my last video was going to be controversial. And the debate that ensued afterwards shows a lot about how the Roblox developer community is thinking. Most devs are hobbyists. And I mean that they're hobbyists in that they aren't trying to make money from their work on Roblox. They aren't trying to make this a career. And that's a personal choice. You can choose to make this a career and be serious about this or not. But if all you are after is following your passion, you're not a serious developer. If you don't ever consider strategy, how are you ever going to make your career sustainable? How are you going to make this last? That's my question for you. Because following your heart will only get you so far. Most devs are not thinking logically. They're thinking irrationally about Roblox development. And look, passion is important, but it's not everything. I said this in my last video. Sometimes we can't make our passion projects, and that's okay. Sometimes we can't make the next jailbreak. Sometimes we can't make the next Brookhaven. Sometimes we just aren't going to do that when we're new, and that's okay. But that requires us to also understand that we have to be realistic and lower our expectations in the start and make simple games first. Now, both serious developers and hobbyists agree with me on make simple games first in general, right? Most people are going to agree with that. Yeah, when you're new, you should make simple projects in order to build skills and actually start to level up step by step to big complex games rather than trying to make the most complex game in the world on day one. Most people agree with me that that is the correct way to do things. But what people in the hobbyist crowd like to disagree on is the fact that not only should you make simple games first, you should also try to make money from those games while you're at it. And I had a lot of people on X who were saying, bro, how are you qualified to be giving these, this advice? How are you qualified to have an opinion on this? So when people don't have an argument, they resort to attacking your credibility. And you know what's funny about that is that the way that I figured this out, the way that I actually came to this conclusion is by doing exactly what I'm teaching people. So for years, I tried to make complex games. I made games in Volt Gaming Studios is a group. We tried to, you know, put together a team of people on Roblox, try to make very, very nice projects like Camping Simulator. The Hinge is a horror game. The other one self-explanatory. It's a simulator. Try to make all these games, right? But we were not skilled enough to finish them, right? We were trying to make our dream game first. Essentially, we were trying to make complex games first, which doesn't work in most cases. But after that, a few years after that group, we started Jimmy Games. And Jimmy Games is where everything started to change for us. When I started Jimmy Games with Jimmy and the rest of the team back in 2021, right? <clears throat> Jimmy and I, we had just made a very simple game called Sussy Imposter Land. We made a meme game, right? And this game, right, we started advertising it after we made it. It was very simple. It was a, just a lot of Among Us jokes and some guns. Put it out there. We advertised it with a good thousand Robux. Then, right, it started to grow. It started to get players. 10, 20, 30, 40. And soon enough, we found, oh, if we don't advertise, people still play. And we realized for the first time, we actually had a game that was doing well. And we started to make hundreds of thousands, even millions of Robux in a month from these games. And we just made one after another. Land game after land game after land game. Because we found a formula that works and we were building a movement. And look, are these games perfect? Absolutely not. Are these games front page? They have been. We were on featured before. But it wasn't like we were there forever. But what do the games have? They have over 40 million visits. 
7 million Robux in earnings, and a group with over 130,000 members. Results talk. So to all the people out there on X who are talking about this, right? you don't have to like my games. And you don't have to like my channel. You don't have to like my advice either. I'm talking to a specific set of people who want to learn, who want to gain insight from my experiences on the platform. And if you think that you have better ideas than me, by all means, go start your own channel. I don't need you here. By all means, right? N nothing stopping you. But no, instead, you want to go on Twitter and you want to post about me nonstop. That's okay. I'll take the free advertising. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But all these people, right, they want to dismiss what I'm saying, not by making an actual argument against it, but by saying, oh, look, he made Jimmy Games. You can't listen to him. Yeah, I made Jimmy Games. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Do you have an actual argument? Or do you just want to talk about my games, right? Because my games actually back up all my arguments. And that's what the hobbyists are most afraid of is, oh, if this strategy thing works, then my approach of just following my passion without doing anything else is cope. If this strategy thing works, if what Smarty's saying is true, oh, make simple games first. Check Jimmy Games. All right, done. Use those funds to make better games later. Check. Working with Myro right now. Several games in the works. If that's true, then I'm going to get ahead of you. All the people on X, when you're saying these things, when you're making the posts, you're just showing that you're, you're frustrated, right? And I understand, right? You're envious. You wish that you had 120,000 subscribers who listen to what you say. And... You also wish that you had some games that were working out, right? But because you refuse to listen to what I'm telling you, right? Because you refuse to listen to the truth about Roblox development, which is have a strategy and put that before passion, actually look at what succeeds in the market, look at what people want to play and then make that and then stop complaining about cash grabs and actually go and make those games because they aren't cash grabs. They're just successful games that you don't like. So guys, you need to learn something important. I have made the mistake of actually going on X and typing replies to these people, arguing with them. But you have to understand that they will never get it. And if you're here watching this video and you understand this, you are miles ahead of all these other developers because your mindset is right, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that you're automatically gonna make successful games. But it does mean that you are on a better track to do that because you're thinking logically rather than just thinking emotionally, right? Let's think logically. What do people want to play? People want to play simulators. Yeah. People want to play obbies. People want to play grow a garden. But your passion, people don't always want to play that. And does that mean that you have to make an unoriginal game? Does that mean you have to make a low quality game in order to get noticed? No, but it does mean that you have to be able to put aside what you're interested in so that you can prioritize what the players are interested in. But most devs, they're too selfish to do that. That's really what it is. Focusing too much on your passion, right? That's selfish. And I don't mean that in terms of a moral thing, right? I mean it in that you're so focused on yourself that you aren't focused on what the players actually want. You aren't focused on what your audience craves. You aren't focused on reaching the people that you actually want to reach. Because we were able to focus on the memes in Jimmy Games, right? Like at the time, it was a few years ago. Among Us was a very, very popular meme. So we took that, knowing what the players wanted, and we made that game. And I remember talking to Jimmy, right? He had this idea originally. He had the, yep, he had the idea for Sussy Imposter Land. And I was sitting there like, nah, bro, you got to make something quality, People aren't going to like that. It's not going to work. I was the one acting like a hobbyist, right? I, me, Smarty RBX. Yes, I was acting like a hobbyist back then. Jimmy was thinking right. He was like, okay, people want Among Us. People want Sus. People want this. So let's make it. Let's make what people actually want. And I eventually aligned with him when I realized, yeah, he's right. And, and we saw it blow up. And it got millions of visits and it, it started making us a ton of Robux, 
right? And we were able to just keep on growing and growing and growing and growing it. And that's because we continued adapting also based on what players wanted, right? We also added in game passes. We also added in updates and quality improvements. We also added in progression mechanics, things people wanted, right? We continued to adapt from there. And because we did that back then with all these games and Jimmy games, we now have the funds to make all the new projects we want. We now have the funds to have the legwork of dozens of developers working under us, as I am right now with Myro, and as we will continue to do as we continue on in the future. Because what this fundamentally is, is it's a business mindset. You are not thinking in terms of what can I do as one person, which is limited. You're thinking in terms of leverage. You're thinking in terms of amplifying your efforts beyond what you can personally do. You're thinking of using funds to hire more people. You're thinking of using funds to make better games. You're thinking of using funds to scale up what you're doing on Roblox rather than just staying where you are or staying at the current level of output you have. Most people have no concept of leverage. That's why everybody wants to work a job rather than start a business. And we're seeing this just reflected in the Roblox space where people don't get leverage. They don't get why you need a strategy. You need a strategy not so you can make soulless games with the sole intent of sucking as much money out of your players' pockets as possible with every single part, UI button, and mechanic in your game, but rather with the intent to, yeah, make a fun game, but also make money from it so you can continue to scale up more on Roblox, so you can make better games, so you can hire more people, so you can hire better people, so that you can continue to expand your career. Right? Because if we're just focused on the games that we're making right now, we're thinking in terms of just passion. But if we start thinking ahead, now we're thinking in terms of strategy. And that's the point. I don't think it should be controversial to say, hey, let's take a step back and let's actually think ahead. Right? In no other field, in no other area of life would this be controversial. Your parents say, oh, go, go to college so you can get a job. That's strategy. Even if it's not a good one for most people, it is certainly a strategy because you are getting college. Why? So you can get a job in the future so that you don't have to work at McDonald's. So you can be partner in the law firm. So you can be the CEO of a tech startup. So you can be a surgeon. And I'm saying, let's make simple games first so that we can be better developers and so that we can actually build careers, so that we can actually make better games as we go on in the future so that we can think about how what we're working on right now influences what we're going to work on in six months or in a year. So start mapping out your grand strategy in your Roblox development career and have quantifiable goals and particularly the goal to make money so you can make this an actual sustainable career for yourself instead of just relying on hope. And if you do that, you are a serious developer. Otherwise, welcome to the land of hobbyists. You can join all those people on X complaining.